CataractCoach.com. How much capsule polishing is needed? And does patient age matter? So I'm going to show you a complete cataract case start to finish. Here's the patient. Look carefully at the anterior lens capsule. What do you see? Pseudo exfoliation. The patient has pseudo exfoliation syndrome. Now, the dilation is pretty good, and I think the zone support is pretty reasonable, but look at all that anterior uh, capsule material. So you have pseudo exfoliation material on the anterior lens capsule, and you can see that distribution of it. So filling eye with our viscoelastic here, let's get that main incision done. This patient is 94 years old. So she's a pretty healthy 94-year-old, and everything's pretty nice in her life, and now it's time to fix the vision and enjoy a nice sharp vision. But my question to you is, is surgery different in a 94-year-old? Well, we know it is. We've made videos here that cataract surgery in nonagenarians or those over age 90 is different for sure. The, look at the wrinkling of the capsule. That, that alone should make you pause. And this patient does have tissues that are a little bit weaker. Now, of course, the pseudo exfoliation contributes to that. So there's a little bit of laxity there, but it's enough support that we're able to create a nice round five millimeter rexus. That's pretty controlled. And I'll tell you now, we're not going to have any issues with, with lens removal or, or cataract surgery. Now, that rex is beautifully centered up over the visual axis. Notice how the Purkinje images are in the absolute center. Let's get some hydro dissection done. I'm expecting some pretty reasonable nuclear density here, just given the patient's age of 94. So there's that nucleus. In the preoperative measurements, the lens had a very large thickness. I think the thickness was like 4.8 millimeters anterior to posterior dimensions of this uh, human crystalline lens, the cataract. So a little bit higher dissection, a little bit more protection of the endothelium. Of course, when you're 94, the you know, endothelial, endothelial cell count may not be all that high. So now going in with the phaco probe, going bevel down. Let's get some chop action here. Let's see what we can do. Phaco probe going into the nucleus chopper, going in a little combo chop. Split that nucleus into two halves. And this part of the surgery is going to be routine. But I want to think about is how much capsule polishing do we do? And I know you've seen a lot of videos of other surgeons that we've hosted on Cataract Coach. We even use dedicated capsule polishing instrumentation. The end of nucleus removal, when the capsule bag is full of viscoelastic, they use those instruments to go really clean up and scrape and polish the capsule bag, especially the undersurface of the anterior rim. And that looks great. Now, I tend to do capsule polishing using the FACO probe because there's an advantage. It has vacuum built right in, or the IA probe, pardon me. So using the IA probe at the end of the case, or when removing cortex or removing viscoelastic from the eye, we can actually go and remove a lot of that um, lens epithelial material, those lens epithelial cells. And that works very well. But what's the balance? How much polishing is really required here in a routine or relatively routine case like this? Again, the patient, other than being 94 years old, has a reasonable cataract of reasonable density, not too bad. And has some pseudo exfoliation, but not terrible on the Zonger support. And so now we'll watch carefully as we remove the lens cortex. Let's go in here with the IA probe. And one thing I always look at during this stage is look at the rexus edge. Let's make sure the rexus edge isn't moving, right? In a case of weakened or suspected uh, poor Zonger support, if you go in there and as you're moving cortex, the caps rexus edge is moving, that's the whole bag moving. That's more and more Zonger damage that you're causing. So now let's go under here. I'm going to use that IA probe and gently polish up that underservice, the anterior using light vacuum on my foot pedal also to really clean that up. But the question here is how much of that's actually on the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim? And how much of that is that pseudo exfoliation material that was already present on the outside of the, the superior, the anterior surface of the anterior capsule rim? So that's the big question here. And I think we've got to be cautious. When we put this lens in here, watch, we'll put it in carefully. I can use that chopper instrument of mine. It has a flat edge. I can use that to help scrape and polish the anterior capsule rim more if I need to. But again, we've got to ask ourselves, what is the balance here? And I think the balance is what you learned in med school. Remember, you know, I'm polishing it up. Look at that chopper. I can use that to help scrape off any lens epithelial cells. But what we learned in med school was first do no harm, doctor. Remember that? So let's not do any harm. I think this patient is going to be absolutely thrilled with this outcome. Look at that beautiful rexus, nicely centered lens. 
this patient's going to have a tremendous improvement in vision. Plus, in addition, the patient was a plus three hypro to begin with, and we're making this eye about a plano refractive outcome. So I'll even do a little more polishing of the undersurface, the anterior rim, but guess what? A lot of that material is pseudo X material on the anterior or top surface of the anterior capsule. And it just doesn't make any sense to go bananas polishing this. This patient's gonna have a beautiful outcome. So I want you to think about that, balance it out. I know it's easy to be an armchair quarterback, right? To watch other people operate and say, oh no, I would have done X and Y and Z differently. No, you always, sometimes you don't know the whole story. You can't tell just by looking at this eye that the patient's 94 years old. I know it, because I just did the surgery. So I know it for sure. And I wanna be super cautious here. I wanna give the patient a fantastic outcome, which I think we really have done there. Look at that beautiful centration of the lens. Look at that overlap 360, I love that Rexus. Look at those Purkinje images, beautifully centered in, this, in the center of that optic. Incisions are sealed nicely. This patient will do great. Let's give her some medicine here, some triamcinolone, preservative free. Let's swirl that around with a little more BSS, and we'll finish here with some preservative free moxifloxacin. People ask about that. Of course, I give the best. Now, remember the patient has a little bit of astigmatism against the rule, steep at 180, so that fake incision is going to help. And let's pair that with this LRI, this limbal relaxed incision, also made with a diamond, and we'll neutralize that out, and the patient has a beautiful outcome. So like everything else in life, there's a balance. Don't pause the capsule too much.